Welcome to The Flip Side, and we are in conversation with Tabo Rametti, uh, actor and producer. Welcome, Tabo. What's up, T? Why are you so serious? <laughs> How are you, my man? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm all right, man. It's been a while. I haven't seen you in long. Too long, yeah. yeah. We, we play basketball together. Yeah, you do. You haven't been in the courts for a long time. Yeah, and no, I've been checking out. I've been checking out. I've been like... Uh, you, you need know, to tripping. come back, huh? I'm going to come back and, and I'm going to like injure some players. Yo, so yeah. Well. Up, uh, you know, we, <laughs> uh, we know your history. <laughs> Please be be nice. <laughs> <laughs> some of us are fathers now. <laughs> <laughs> me, Biggie, John. Oh, crap. You guys, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Damn, man. You're making me feel so old. No, no, you're a youngster. Oh, dude, yeah. you guys. John's not like his second one. Is it? I think, isn't he? Oh, okay. No. I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> Anyways, it's been an interesting EPL season. All right, so first things first, I'm an Arsenal fan. I'm a diehard gunner. So I support Sundowns and Arsenal. Those are my teams. I mean, I, I support a team in each league. Yeah. Um, But, like... Arsenal, Arsenal's my baby. I love her. Thierry Henry, you know, Wenger, the Invincibles. That generation was incredible. You guys won a trophy this year. It must be great. <sighs> ah, horrible season. Don't ask me if Wenger, hours of Wenger in, man. Look, he's what we have right Not even, like, I don't even want to, like, take it down to that level. Wenger is Arsenal. I supported Arsenal because of Wenger. I'm not even okay. a front. Like, you know. So you have Wenger in firmly. Uh, I, um, man, I think it's time for a change. Yeah. I think maybe it would have been interesting if, as if like Thierry Henry came in as assistant coach for Steve Bold. And I don't want like Steve Bold to lose his job and like he's got a family. I understand like that. But like if yeah. Thierry Henry came through and then he might pull as a done, Pep Guardiola, like and he's got the arrogance I think Arsenal need to have back, man. Yeah, no, I'm we just... like arrogance. What about Vieira? He's been doing well as a coach. Vera. I think he's just going to... I always thought we should... He sh- the fact that he went to City is like heartbreaking. Man. I think all those guys, guys like Vieira, um, Bergkamp, man. Yeah. Like, I'm well, I don't know what, what coaching badges Bergkamp has. Like. He's, he's the assistant coach at uh, Ajax. Sorry, yeah, but he can't fly. So. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the only thing about Bergkamp. Yeah, I think it's he's European like Cups. Oh, man, so. a flying thing. So, no, that's you why can't. we put him... So, yeah. me Vieira... Right. Vieira or Thierry Henry would be a great like follow up to Wenger and especially coming from his generation. And what transfers would you like to see? And please, please, be realistic. Don't no say Mbappe. I never thought that. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard me even Don't say Mbappe. I was like, hey. The thing is, man, like Mbappe when we went for him when he was a teenager and Wenger went to his his like, crib. Why didn't we sign the kid, man? You know what I'm saying? Like we should have said like no, 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 like I right, five million, let's go. I didn't know he was going to turn out the way he turned yeah, out. Yeah, that's I mean. the thing. That's the thing. And I don't blame Wenger. But, okay, for me, I'd like James Rodriguez. James, yeah. He's available. Yeah, he is. And I think About he's About 70. I think we can knock him down. 60. I think, I think they get him off those. I mean, he's, he's on very high fees right now. He wants to go. Arsenal's a chance for him to be a star. And, like, that might make Alexis and, like, Ozzo, like, okay, nah. Okay, nah, we've nah, got we a, a So, him... I like this guy called Casper Dolberg from Ajax. Yeah, but he he's untested and he doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to go. And just, that's that's how yeah, I know. That's how I know he's the right striker. Yeah, no, that's exactly how I know he's the right striker. Yeah, no, he's a good he's a good striker he's for the a future. Smart kid. He's making the right moves. I can feel like he's going to be the kind of striker we should have. We should just go to Ajax and just say like. What about this. the Dembele? I love. Mr. I Dembele. love Dembele. I don't know why I wouldn't sign him from Fulham, yeah. dude. Dembele is amazing. No, I, like right now, dude. If like, uh, and he's twenty. Yeah, he's twenty. Yeah, but you see what he was doing yesterday. Listen, I'm, I liked him when I, I think last season when he was a striker. Then we got well Perez, who was actually a really good striker. Then he wasn't even used. Yeah, why me. are you not giving him a chance? I mean, whenever I've seen him, he's been amazing. Man, like, uh, did you say the same thing about Oxlade Chamberlain? You know uh, what I mean? Oxlade, I've he, seen enough to make a decision that. Really? Yeah, I don't think. No, nah, well, I rate that he's okay, but he's yeah. not someone. Who you would uh, go for a title challenge with? I don't think as a mm. starter, maybe as a squad player, mm. I'd get him as a squad I hear player. What you mean. I hear what yeah, you mean. but I'd as a starter, to, realistically, I'd have to agree yeah. with you. Yeah. So when you look at other teams, like mm. players that play in the same position as uh, Ox, uh, you've got Hazard, you've got Mkhitaryan. So, is he better than those players? He can be. No, he cannot. He's just he can be. There's something special about that kid, man. It's just Ox, Wenger hasn't he's not done the a right kid anymore. Piece. I know that's the thing. Wenger hasn't given the kid touch line, man. I think he's good enough. But, but okay, cool. So it's James Rodriguez, and then striker, man. Realistically, that I think we can get, man. I, 
I don't want to say like if it's me as Casper Dolberg. I, I, I just say go in, just give the go to go to them and say sixty million right now, like flinch. I think I actually wouldn't say nothing. Ajax have money, they don't care. No, they, they, don't, have, <laughs> they don't have sixty million. They don't like make that much money. Million. And they're in the Champions League as well. So Dolberg leaving a Champions League team to play for a non-Champions League team. Yeah, but like he knows like there's more interest in us. Also, can get back into the Champions League. That's not gonna be. Can they? It's yes, it's, can. it's tough now because. But if you look, okay, look at the period. The way they ended off was seven straight. Uh, like wins, yeah. Like they, and that that involved like Chelsea. I think you guys like we whipped that we whipped bass like. Yeah, but we were not serious. We were uh, like whatever. <laughs> you got whipped. You got whipped. Anyway, that's we're, pre- you. we're preparing for the Europa. Ah, uh, yeah. Which we won, by the way. And now we in the Champions League. Yeah. Anyway, that's not about Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal. I love Arsenal. It's like what, but I love it. I'm depressed about it. I still think Thierry Henry should come on as the coach. Um, I'd really love to see that and I'd love Thierry Henry or even Patrick Vieira and then and Thierry Henry like that's how I know that Arsenal and mostly it's not me about Wenger out or in it's yeah. Stan Kroenke dude that guy needs to fuck off <laughs> straight up I'm sorry but like the thing is you can tell with the chairman like there's Germans who are vested in the team who enjoy it who like it like mm-hmm. you know Chelsea have a chairman like that you know you feel like they're progressive even the United you guys might have say like whatever but they're invested in the interest no, no. of the brand winning and succeeding no, they have. I'm not complaining you know what I mean I'm not complaining at all Stan and you can see what the other holdings he has he owns like uh, baseball teams and all that stuff yeah. like that and the same things happen to them he's taking them from really good teams to mediocre teams <laughs> We have a Russian billionaire who's like richer than Chelsea's billionaire, right? Who who has thirty percent of Arsenal? Who's saying I'm gonna buy this whole club from you for a billion rent? That's you making so much profit, a billion dollar pounds. Stan is saying no. He's like no, no, I'm I, good. I got you because listen, I got so much money already. Yeah, right? and, and my and wife is a cash cow. And my, and my wife is like the Walmart queen. She's no. gonna inherit Walmart, like so. So he's not really, he, just, he doesn't care. He doesn't, like, there's nothing. Working. They offered him two billion. He didn't flinch. Yeah, I didn't. I saw that in the... That hurts my feelings. But anyway, yeah. never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> okay. That's scary. Yeah, let's go yeah. to... Um, what about Benny? Benny McCarthy. Oh, yeah, he's uh, Cape Town City. Mm. It's going to be interesting. Great move, great move. Yeah. I have so much faith in Benny. He's arrogant. That's what I. Yeah, that's what the, you want. The like, arrogance. He's like he just. I, can, I just don't see him wanting to lose. Benny yeah. against Peter. I can't wait. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Two arrogant guys like, going up against each other. That's gonna be amazing. And he's gonna demand a lot from his players. Like Benny just yeah. looks like the kind of. You seen him even when he was a player. He was like he, like when he was the captain. He was a yeah. captain. Like we forget that. Yeah, no, but players are willing to play for Benny. Yeah, dude. No. And he'd be turning around even when he had he was big and whatever. He was still like, hey, 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 let's go. Oh, scoring. So you he respect. Yeah, scoring, you respect dude. that kind of. Nah, yeah. man, that guy is... Production. I, you know, we don't respect our, like, our, our really talented players. Dane Clitt's not respected. Like, guys like Dylan Shepard. Like, we've had, like, super special... Dane yeah. Clitt's an amazing player. It's just that like, Umzimba... Yeah, it's very cool. small. And Some yeah. duty. Like, these, these great players that we just haven't, like, focused on. You know? We've nursed them and made them great. Well, it's mm. because of the coaches that they play under. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Horrible coaches. I mean, you see guys like, um, like Wayne Rooney. I mean, when he played under Alex Ferguson, he molded mm. him to be the Something player that is. is. Uh, That's important. Yeah, we don't have like great coaches in this country that yeah. can mold players and you make know, them good I think individuals. For me, maybe Gordon Egerson yeah. is one of the closest to that. Uh, if he was younger, it would be so amazing. You know? well, I, and but another think, thing, mm. the structures that we have in our football to mm. take care of these players, yeah. we don't have like... We um, have the finances, but we like... It goes to places it shouldn't go. Yeah, I mean, you take a guy from the hood mm. uh, who's never seen more than 500 bucks in his life and you now give him 40, 50 a month. Yes, that and is you lit. Le- And you say, just go ahead on your own devices without any training. What do you think <laughs> is going to happen to that young man? Yeah, and that's why weird. most of the guys, um, they fuck out because of that. Yeah, no, nah, for real. Yeah, for so real. we need I to get it. our structures in our football. No, I think yeah. so too. I think so too. But I'm, I'm excited just seeing things like Cape Town City and they're using former players as coaches. Which is like that's an interesting thing, yeah, man. That's that's an interesting side of things. I think like even South Africa in its entirety is is getting to an interesting place. I think in our film and our music, yeah. I think there's a new generation, a new wave of thoughts. Let's and you are this. you are the one of the first uh, South African actors to play like a South African role in like a movie, yeah, like a political yeah themed movie. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That that was a trippy thing. You know, for Kalushi. Yeah, Kalushi. Um, yeah, so I played Solon Matlangu in the film Kalushi. Ah, that was like an interesting life journey, dude. Like the film itself took 10 years to make. 10 years? Yeah, 10 years Jeez. to make. 
I shot it for, <laughs> I think, three years of my life, but it was like two months, and then I, I stopped for like a year, a whole year, and then I shot for a month, and then I had to come back and do some pickup stuff. Why did it take so long? Budget, man. Oh, like, cool. budget, budget, budget ran out, you know, so we had to like stop and start, and I had to like write down my weight and like how I looked like back then and try uh, to gym back to that. But then I was doing a play at the same time. It was, it was so crazy. But, I mean, the movie is wonderfully shot. I mean, yeah. when you see like the yeah. streets of my melodies, like you feel the essence of yeah. being there in uh, Mozambique yeah. as well. I mean, it, oh, captures the, it captures the beauty of the yeah. whole country. Um, it was such an amazing work. Yeah, we had such a great cinematographer, Tommy Maddox, man. Like, yo, Maddox, Maddox also worked camera for um, Straight Out of Compton, oh, and okay. um, he worked camera on Iron Man too. <clears throat> you know, he's a he's a brother. He's a he's an African American brother. Oh, okay. Uh, he studied with our director Mandela Dube uh, at the same school, and he actually like Mandela was his like mentor. So he called him out. He's like, no, come through, come shoot this for me. And yo, man, he, he's actually gotten so much work from this in America now. He's like one of the top rated oh, well, was amazing. I mean, yeah. 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 And uh, what did you do to um, prepare for the role of Solomon Mashana? What kind of things did you do? Sure, dude. Like, to be honest with you, man, like, I, I had to. It was such a weird thing getting this role. It was such a weird process to get it because. I found out about it, like, I was sitting on a couch, an audition couch, getting ready to audition, and this one guy named Tabo Athile, I can never remember his name. That's the only reason I remember his name, is because of this. And he was like, hey, he was like, told me a lot, he was like, hey, dude, you should audition for this movie called Kalush. He just, out of nowhere, I don't know this guy. I'm like, okay, cool. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I want to audition for this other character called Mondi, but you should definitely do it, you should definitely do it. I'm like, cool. Then the same audition, this other dude comes through and he works at the casting agency that actually is auditioning Kalushi. And he's like, hey, you should come in and audition for Kalushi. So I sent my agent a text. I was like, yo, dude, I want to audition for Kalushi. He's like, oh, don't worry. They really want to see you for something. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. So I went and then they sent me scripts for other characters, two other characters. And they didn't want me to read for the me character because uh, they'd already cast a guy there. Ah, uh, okay. So I go there and I said to the casting agency, Bonnie Lee Bowman, who I'd worked with before on a show called Class Act, which started my career. Uh, she was the acting coach there and she's the casting director for this. And so she was like, no, Tabu, you're so wrong for this. It's not going to work out. It's already cast. No, and she, she was angry at me like and everything. I'm like, I prepared for it anyway. She's like, okay, listen, I'm only going to let you read the other person. And okay. if I like that one, then I might let you read for some Yeah. And like I got like my agent got in trouble for it. Cause like how could you let him do this? So I read for the guy. They're like that was good. That was good. They're like okay, you can read the other one. And then I read it. And you and, killed it. And they all cried. Like, oh yeah. All of them. The whole room was just like sobbing. They were crying. I was like okay, cool. Then for four months, they said to me like no, still they they just like you. Can they use you as a reader to read all the other actors with? But they're still gonna use the other guy. Oh shit. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> and so for four months, I was reading for everybody and working with this character, working with this thingy. And then just one day, the director, the director just turned to me, he's like, oh, dude, you're Kalushi, by the way. Oh, just like that? And that was it. What happened to the other guy? He goes, he was upset, um, oh. understandably, understandably. And then they offered him uh, another role. He didn't want it because they'd come and offered him the role. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I just, you know what it is, man? And I think it, it just felt like it was always my role. Yeah. Even when I, even before... When I went to go read, before I went to go read for it, I went to my to pick up my mom at work, and I went to this dude, and he he speaks in Debele. I'm like, hey, I need to know in Debele because I'm going to be playing Solomon in my soon. And then yeah. that was just what after I'd heard the Kalushi thing, like who the hell Kalushi was. That was it. And he just and then he helped me with some Debele words, and I used that as words in my oh, audition. Yeah, of course. In my audition, and I even did my audition in Debele, like. I got this friend of mine, Umvali. She's actually like a minister's granddaughter or something, and she she was just she translated everything for me and she'd do it through <laughs> through uh, WhatsApp. Yeah. And she'd like send me voice notes and I sent her voice notes and she played it for her, my grandmother. Like yo, he's sounding like he can speak in Devela. <laughs> and, and I did my audition. That was just for me auditioning for it. And how good is in Devela now? It's still horrible. Oh, okay. it's, still, <laughs> it's, still, it's still horrible. But uh, yeah, man. It just so when you like ask me like how did I prepare for it, dude? Like I felt like it was just always. I've given everyone other answers, but like to be honest with you, like dude, like even when I played it, dude, it was the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah, I'm gonna be so honest with you, like I just was there, and it just, it just. I don't know how to explain it, man. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, I don't know. I've, look, maybe, 
even before that, like I think we went to his grave, uh, and then we did his part, like you know, we did our traditional theme, gumbo tea and snake, and we spoke to him before we shot a single frame, dude. Mm -hmm. We're like, yo, dude, can we have permission to like tell your story? Can we have permission to, you know, to be you? And like his brother was right there during that whole time, you know what I mean? And he was there with us right now. And he did that. He did that ceremony. And immediately it was like, okay, who? His brother is the chief. Oh. Yeah, he's a chief. Chief Lucas Matlong. Chief Lucas Matlong. Yeah, 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 yeah. What he's, region is the chief from? Uh, region. Yeah. He's in Debele, then Debele, oh. but in uh, Pretoria. He's in the, in the Pretoria section. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So you spent time with him to prepare for he, he was He was the advisor in the film the whole time we shot it. Oh, okay. So he was there the whole time. And you kept the family involved? Yeah, they, we hired them, Vinny, like I was, like he was translating for me, like like literally I hired them. And they even get proceeds from the movie, so oh, okay. whatever the sales made, they actually get proceeds. It's, yeah. And do you feel that um, the movie was promoted enough in South Africa? Look. You have to understand two things, right? I used to be like, oh, they're not promoting it enough. Blah. I was angry, I was angry, and now I just understand it was commerce, man. And then also, after that, like Stoke and Co. and New Metro said, we're only going to give you 28 cinemas nationwide. That's Stoke and Co. and New Metro. The entire country of... There was provinces that didn't have anything, and then they only put it in, like, suburbs and stuff like yeah. that, where people can access to it. It's like... And it's a very powerful South African movie that I think every single South African should see. I mean, yeah. we are not taught about our heroes, our struggle heroes, um, so we need to know these kind of movies um, need to be seen by the people. Mm. I mean, especially what they're doing, uh, see what they've done in the Ethiopian film industry. It's a, I'll, it's just what I'm excited about. That. Yeah, that's I want to go there. That's amazing because yeah. they make sure that their movies uh, are for their people and by doing that the film mm. industry is growing exponentially mm. yeah and I think we're missing the point here by just catering for a the certain American few yeah. yeah because uh, if we cater for everyone we can really have a good industry I think so too. look I, am I crazy I may have a minute I feel like Kurushi was a profitable movie. It was like I felt like a movie that I would be worth my money. I don't know. Maybe I'm being arrogant. No, it's, it was it was a beautiful movie. I, I'm not talking about, about being in it. Like the whole picture, yeah. the way it was put together, the performances. Like I felt like if I went to, like, you could have done that with the Titanic. It like the Titanic. It had that yeah. kind of the same thing. Like you you paid your money. Like oh no, I spent my money well. Yeah. You know. But it. I mean. When I told people I'm I'm going to have a conversation with the staff from Kalushi, like, a lot of people didn't know who the hell that what's, was. What's Kalushi? What yeah, they don't. Yeah. So it's it's very sad. And yeah, I I really you know what I'm I'm so chilled with it. I'm so cool. Like it's I've been seen by the right kind of people for me to do what I need to do. Mm. And also we are getting the movie out to communities now. It's actually just we just got deals, we broke deals. Like the quality of the arts just leapt above the politics, the lack yeah. of money. And the government just really sort of like, no, this is this is it, man. And you know, we was I was like scared it would be used as a propaganda tool and stuff like that because I don't have you know, political allegiance to nobody, man. I'm allegiance to South Africa. That's it, Tanzania. That's it. That's it. You know, I don't care who's in charge. I don't care who's doing it. Just do right by the people in it, man. That's yeah. it. You know what I mean? Um, so I didn't want that to be. That's why I don't go to any of the things, you know, like you know that I'm invited to. But I. I always, you know, tend respectfully to government events where, like, but that's the same government that's also, like, making sure that people see the film and educating them. And they watch the film and they learn. Like, honestly, I've been to so many government functions now, and after they see the movie, they come to me. And I've, we're in Riches Bay, and I'm, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but they literally said, like, this pop, pop person who was in charge there, I'm not going to say who, mm -hmm. said that, like, after this movie, we must remember why we joined this party. Remember that we must do right by the people, not what we've been doing lately. This is why yeah. people did it, you know. Yeah. And that was the first time I heard like acknowledgement of like, yo, listen, we're messing up. And maybe, dude, maybe yeah, like the maybe people are listening, dude. Yeah, that's some powerful stuff. I see those moments, and I, I was with the first lady. Sorry, I was with the first lady as well. Man, let me say something. Like, you can say whatever you want to say. Hey, like. Don't believe the media. I've seen it. Like, like that's why you guys don't even exist, right? Because the media is full of crap, dude. Let me tell you something. The media is a machine controlled by another machine to have a certain effect. You never see news for for like nothing. Like they're not just showing you that because like you need to see it. Mm -hmm. They need you to think a certain way to achieve a certain objective. That's the media because people have to pay for that. Yeah. You think people are paying to like just show you stuff? No. 
and another thing, we don't see the news that really matter as well. Exactly. I mean, when you look like um, when terrorist attacks happen, they'll show us terrorist attacks from America, England, France, but the past week or so, there was a big terrorist attack in Egypt, and no one knows about yeah, it. Like, because, no. oh, okay, no, whatever. whatever. Like, okay. It's Africa. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, we have these hostages, people like that. Those girls in Nigeria are still gone. Yeah, I mean, it was a cool little hashtag for Yeah, hashtag don't cool solve problems. problems. We yeah. know that. I mean, you know what I mean? But anyway, sorry, why I was getting to the media is like, I was with the first lady. Dude, that's one of the most eloquent, intelligent women I've ever met in my entire life. First lady of South Africa. This first. Excuse me. Oh, this I know. Is, I know. Sure, I'll be honest with you. I don't quite remember. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. But she's an amazing lady. Honestly, like, seriously. I'll be honest, I don't remember right now. Okay. Cool. But she is honestly one of the most amazing women I've ever come across. Dude, and then she explained the political landscape. And I don't know if I should share these things because she said in this beautiful speech, man. And I could understand. Whatever's wrong within that party, dude, is something they can fix and they should fix. And they know they can fix it. Because honestly, it is an incredible establishment. Yo, my friend, it is like there's... When you're inside it, when you see its mechanics, it's like... Dude, it is like a machine. They have everything necessary to do this right. They should do it right. But anyway, she was saying something and uh, I think her husband was being badgered and she was saying like people forget that all we have is political power that's all we have and i was like what she likes to be careful of what you listen to yeah you know what i mean and then you started looking at the news from their perspective and like oh wow look at the things they've done and like the people they've moved around and all of a sudden from their perspective you can you sort of see it i was like what you know and i was one of the people <laughs> on the other side and like what are you doing what are you doing so man yeah so I don't know what's going on in there and I, I don't really know what's going to happen with this country but the potential to be great is there. Yeah, I know we have a lot of potential in this yeah. country. Just people must do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about um, your personal hero, Robin Williams. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, he, com yeah. Com yeah. he committed suicide. Uh, so I, I know um, you also suffered from some depression. depression yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how d um, did you deal with that? Man, like... You know, I was never clinically diagnosed with depression. Okay. And I'll tell you why I knew I, I, I had depression. My brother was. Okay. And I was going through a lot of stuff. And my brother, you know, as a child, I I felt certain things. I reacted a certain way. Like, for my whole life, my brother had clinical depression. And when I was 25, I woke up. It was my 25th birthday. And all of a sudden, this, like, weight lifted off my chest. It was weird. Like, I listened to this. I got out of my bed. Listen to me. I was sober as a judge. Nothing. I was just, whoa. And I felt happy. Like, I felt happy. It was so foreign, so alien. And I felt confident, dude. Like, I looked in the mirror and I was like, yo, I'm not a bad-looking person. And then immediately, I looked back at my life. And then I was realized how how much I hated myself, you know, how close I came to like just always harming myself, like I, how I never thought like I I had a voice in any room, dude. I always felt smile. I always felt like any room I go into, I have to fight and earn my presence in it. I don't know where it comes from. But look, I mean, I was a strange kid. I know that I was a strange kid. I know I was weird. I was a quiet kid. I get it, you know, when I was younger. And, uh, yeah, I, th I mean, n not to get to, you don't invite the quiet kid to the parties and yeah. stuff like that. You don't, like, go hang with him. Then I got bullied. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> there's these two they're friends of mine. When I was in uh, Norcom Park Primary, they used to beat my ass every single day. And I don't mean, like, what? play, Good play. Reason. Just, just fuck me up. They see me and they fuck me up. And um, they used to beat me so hard, dude. Like, they even kicked me in my nuts one time. Like, they, they were, I had to, like, use weird strategies to get away from them. Like, I had um, something called winter fingers. Like, so, you, like, 
when like when it's cold, like blood circulation doesn't flow well to your yes, fingers yes, and you yes, swell yeah. up. So like one time I had wing of fingers, I was like, Yeah, if you touch me you'll get sick from this, you get sick of this and that's the only time they stop eating me. So then I looked back on my whole entire life, dude, and then I, I went to my brother and he looked at me, he's like, You're okay now. I'm like, Why? He's like, Dude, you've been depressed. You've been depressed, you know. Um yeah, and he was just telling me, like, yeah, no, dude, this is what I went through. And I just looked through his life, and, uh, like, and then I, we did the research, he showed me the research, he showed, like, the, I, he, was, he was clinically, like, he knew, he was like, yeah. But he just let me go through my journey, and he's just been such a cool dude. And, no, I'm glad you got out of it, and yeah. you've made these amazing, amazing movies, Kalushi, The Giver, with Meryl Streep. Yeah, that was, that was cool, but then yeah. my scene got... Robbie. Chopped. Yeah, Robbie, they chopped yeah. that scene, it was a lot longer, that yeah. must have been horrible. It must have been horrible. All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Tavo. No way, no way. Yeah, it was an amazing. Yeah. And catch you on the flip side. No way. Flip side.